demonstrate graphically that this reaction I just abbreviated with RXN that's uh, the common abbreviation for reaction and I know that there has been a discussion on Facebook about that yes I know there is an X in it which doesn't turn up in reaction. It's a little bit like tomato. The tomato doesn't have an X in it either. But uh, never mind. <laughs> Demonstrate graphically that this reaction follows a first order reaction. Right. How would you do that? Sorry? Graph on Excel. Graph on Excel. This is an exam. But you're absolutely right. We draw a graph. So you will be given graph paper. Uh, I would hope that you bring pen, pencil, ruler, eraser, that you bring that stuff with you. How would you tackle this question? Usually you get 40% for this question. So if you get this right, you can't fail. Want to uh, wanna do a little bit of brainstorming? Talk to each other, how you get this done. You have graph paper, well, obviously, because it says graphically. So how would you address it? What do we know? What information have I given you? Sorry? Uh, yes, in principle, but what is, what is implicit or there? It's a first order reaction, exactly. Right? What do we know about a first order reaction? First order reaction must look like, if we plot time on the x-axis, and what do we plot on the y-axis? What was that? Molarity for first order. For first order, what do we plot? <laughs> we plot LN of the reactant. Yeah? <laughs> Bless you. Or was this, uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <coughs> and what do we get? We would get a straight line, something like that. Yeah? This point here would indicate our LN of the starting point. And the gradient of that is our minus k. Yeah? 
what do I look for in this graph? I'm looking for, well, is it a straight line? What else do I look for? I look for the axes. Are they labeled? Do we have the time axis here? And does it have a unit in minutes? I want to see that. Yeah? Uh, a graph without label is no graph. I also am looking for, let me write it here, LN reactant. Reactant, can't write properly. What is the unit of that? No unit, exactly. Oops. No unit. If you put a unit down, it's wrong. So we have to write no units. No, you just simply leave it like that. So yeah. Well, if you want to put down no unit, then uh, even for an idiot like me, it is absolutely obvious that you know that there is no unit. Put it down if you want to do no unit. Yeah? And then it gives you this straight line. How do we get this straight line? Well, obviously, what we need to do is we have to calculate the LNs. Yeah? So, from the data that you have, you would then do a separate calculation and you can do that with your calculator you don't need Excel for that and calculate the LN so now you've got your LN here that would be your y-axis and the time would be your x-axis And as I said, the things that I'm looking for are the axis properly done. Do we have proper label of the axis? Do we have the units? And do we see a straight line? What I don't need to see <coughs> is... It says, demonstrate graphically that this follows a first-order reaction. Now, in previous years, what people gave me very often was, right, okay, I know I need to draw a graph. So, time. Well, we don't put in any units. That's, you know, units are dangerous. And then we plot reactant. Again, preferably no units. And then what you get would be something like that. And then people say to me, right, this is the graph for a zero-order reaction. It doesn't give a straight line, so therefore, conclusion, conclusion is, it is not a zero-order reaction. And they are extremely pleased with the outcome of that. Yeah, it is not a zero-order reaction. 
But I could have told you that already because I told you it's already as a first order reaction. So don't give me any zero order reactions. Don't give me something that I don't ask for. Please. We also have some specialists who say, oh well, I plot reactant versus time. I remember there should be a straight line. Oh yeah, we make a straight line. So we put a line of best fit. And as you can see, it is a straight line. Should have gone to spec savers. There's no straight line there. Yes? So what you need to do is, if it asks you for a first order reaction, give me a first order graph. And it could be, if I'm a really nasty person, it could also be that the graph might look like ln something versus time. It could be like that. But it, it goes up the line. When would that be the case? When we have a growth curve, yeah? instead of the concentration of the reactant is going down, it could be that it goes up if there is, for example, microbial growth. That also follows a first order reaction. And again, I would like to see something like that, where we have LN versus time with the right units or not, and a straight line. Make sense? You will get an exercise about growth later on this afternoon where you can practice that. Yeah? Any questions? Yes? There is no negative value on the data that was given, so how can we be sure it's first order? How can we be sure we have to extend the line? You mean there are no negative values here, which is good, which is very good because if you have any negative values here in that area, no, in, the, in the LN, yes. well, if, it is, if there are no negative values, that's, that's absolutely fine. Uh, in this case, what I'll do is I just simply... Do it like that. And all you need to say is, really, when I plot LN versus time, I get a straight line, which is indicative of a first order reaction. End of story. Don't need to expand on it. Yeah? It can go into the negative range if the data are like that. The most important thing is it is a straight line. Yeah? Right, so we've done that. Now, the next thing, the next question that I'm going to ask you would be, From the data given, from the data given, you have to roll that on the tongue. From the data given, calculate the rate constant. What is the rate constant? <coughs> <coughs> I am not asking you to take the graph and read the rate constant of that. That's not allowed. Why is it not allowed? Very simple, because you could have messed up the graph and therefore get a completely wrong rate constant. C, 
So I want you to use the data to get this rate constant. Now, how can we do that? Well, what do we know? What kind of order is it? It's still a first order reaction. Yeah? So, we can use a first order equation for that where we have ln A final divided by A initial equals K times T final minus T initial. That was one of the equations or the main equation that we used for a first order reaction. And what we are looking for is this guy here. So K. Now what we need to find is an A final and A initial and the corresponding T final and T initial. So, what I always do in order to ensure that I'm not losing completely sight of what I'm looking for is I put down K, that's my question mark, that's what I'm looking for. Now, I need to find an A final, I need to find an A initial, and I need to find a T final and a T initial. And I can basically look, take whatever I want. Oops. So, for my A final, I can, and T final, I can say, for example, my T final is 100 minutes. This one here, this guy here. Yeah? 100. So I've got 100 minutes here. And the corresponding A final is, well, from the 100, the corresponding A final is 10.3. So I've chosen this one here. And for my A initial and T initial, I can use, for example, this one here. So my T initial would be 10 minutes. And my A initial would be 97.4. Okay? Okay. Happy with that? Now, if you put these things down like this, and if you give me a first order equation here, you can be dead certain that you get marks for that. Even if you make the biggest cock up in history afterwards, but you will get marks. And now all you need to do is you solve this equation here for k. So you would get k equals ln a final over a initial divided by t final minus t initial. And then all you need to do is plug in the numbers. So you have ln A final is 97.4 divided by 10.3 divided by T final 10.3. You are absolutely right. Thank you.
So that is 10.3 divided by 97.4. divided by uh, 100 minutes minus 10 minutes. And I've also missed out a, a negative sign. Don't tell anyone. Now it's back to negative sign. So you put in the numbers. You have to calculate 10.3 divided by 97.4 first. You take the LN, you get something for that 10, 100 minutes minus 10 minutes gives you 90 minutes. And what do you get for K? Minus 0.02. So minus 0.02. Is it, is it minus 0.02 or is minus 0.025? Five. Minus 0 0.025, yeah. And as I said, I, I was uh, very uh, naughty. I lost the, the minus in the first place, but uh, we've got it back. So we've got minus k equals minus 0 0.025, or k equals 0 0.025. Yeah, so the numerical value we got, what is the unit? Lots of people fall flat on that. What is the unit? Molarity of a minute? <coughs> Look at that. What is the unit of this LN here? Does LN have a unit? No. So, in the numerator, there is no unit. What is the unit in the denominator? It would be minutes. So, this would be 1 over minute. Yeah? Very important that you put this one over minute down. <coughs> Are you happy with that? A number without a unit is like... Um, Help me out here. Um, what is something completely unthinkable? It's like Christmas without turkey or... Um, is like an orgy without naked people. <laughs> you, you, you get it, yeah? It's just simply, it doesn't exist. Okay, the next question usually would be from this rate constant calculate the half-life Calculate the half-life of this reaction. Now we know the equation for half-life, and this only applies to first-order reactions. Only in a first-order reaction we can have a half-life. Any other half-lives don't make sense. Only first order reaction. Oh, I hear music. Oh, that's all right. 
The half-life of a reaction is given as ln2 divided by k. This actually also applies to when we have a growth reaction. But it's then not called a half-life, it's then called a, a doubling time. But the equation is exactly the same. Doubling time or half-life is always ln2 divided by k. And for ln2, you can write 0 0.693 divided, in this case, by 0 0.025, 1 over minute. Okay? Sometimes I might even give you a half-life, and you have to calculate the rate constant from that. All you need to do is rearrange this equation here. What is the unit of half-life in this case? What's the unit for half-life? Now look at that. We are dividing by one over minute. So, the unit for half-life would be Minute. Yes, bless you. The unit would be minute. Rate constant, unit, one over time. Half life or doubling time, doubling time that is sort of in the name, is time. Yeah? Now, if you get that far, congratulations. You've got at least 60% in the exam. I personally think that this is probably too easy, and uh, people might think uh, it's an insult to their intelligence. But I'd rather insult you than uh, you getting bad marks. I hope you, you are happy with this approach. Mm -hmm. Good. So you know how you calculate this K? You just take A final, A initial, T final, T initial, and from these data, you get your K. Now, Obviously, we have some blanks here. Now, let's do the first blank, this one here. And the question for that would be, from the data, from the data, not the graph, because you might have messed up the graph, from the data, calculate the initial concentration. Oh, I can write here. So what we do is, we just simply write down our first order equation. So we know that A final equals A initial times E to the power of minus K T final minus T initial. Again, that is our first order reaction. And I ex expect you that you know this. Okay, so what are we looking for? Well, we are looking for our A initial. Let's write that down. A initial question mark. What is our corresponding T initial?
loud? Zero. zero. Exactly. So zero minutes. What is our A final? We could choose different A finals. I usually choose one that is pretty far away from what I'm looking for. So I would probably choose this guy here. So that's 10.3. And the, T, the corresponding T final would be 100 minutes. So we have this one. This is what we are looking for. We have this one. We have this one. We just need our k. And we just calculated k. So k equals 0 0.025. One over minute. Yeah? So we've got everything. And now we just simply plug that in. We rearrange this equation here for A initial. Bring all this stuff over to that side. And we get our A initial. Just simply by using this scheme, this little table, can very easily do this calculation. Now before you get started, what I want you to do is always do a, what I call the reality check. Let's assume you get for your A initial equals 0 0.03 millimolar. Let's assume. What's your view on that? Can that happen? Vivian goes like that. Why not? It's a bit small. What does it need to be? It needs to be bigger than 97.4. Yeah? Because that was before 97.4, when we waited 10 minutes. So it must be bigger than that. Can it be 10,000 millimolar? Theoretically, it could, yeah, because it's bigger than 97.4, but it looks quite high to me. Now, if for one reason or the other, you get 0 0.03 millimolar. And you just simply can't find where you went wrong. What do you do? Imagine it's exam. You are on flap factor 4000. The adrenaline will be dripping out of your ears when you tilt your head. What do you do? You tell me that you noticed. This value cannot be right. Yeah? Write it down on your exam paper. I know this number is wrong because it must be larger than 97.4. But I don't know where I went wrong. You will get marks for that. Because at least you showed me that you are not just taking a number and say, Yoo-hoo, I got a number. I, I don't care what it is, but, you know, I got something. I want you to tell me that, yes, you realize this is wrong, but you don't know where you went wrong. You will get at least some marks for that. If you don't tell me that, then I go head desk 
and say, OMG, what a complete twit. Don't they see that this can't be real? So at least give me the satisfaction that I say, yes, you got it. It's wrong, but I know that you know. Yeah? If something like that happens, make sure that I know. Are you happy with that? Usually, the exam results for this module are in the range of 75 to 80% average. So, easy marks for you guys. Easier than, you know, chemistry, question 4C. Yeah? Are you happy with that? Can you do that? Now, what you can do is go back to the, to the uh, assessments that I've given you, or the exercises that I've given you, and try to do the graphs on graph paper so that you get good practice on that. This graph should not take you longer than, say, 10 minutes to draw. And it's 40, mi 40 marks. Can't get easier than that. Have a lovely weekend, and I shall see you not, the week ne not next week, but the week after. Have a good Easter. <laughs> <laughs>